Okay, so today we're going to talk about a loudspeaker called the Duetto. It's made by an Italian company called Sonus Faber. It's that company's first streaming active loudspeaker. This episode is brought to you by Made by Music, the new podcast from Cambridge Audio. Welcome back everybody. Yes, I've spent the last three months with the Duetto and in this video I'm going to explain what the Duetto are, what they do and how they compare to a similarly priced streaming active loudspeaker. Now the Duetto is an active speaker that's designed in Italy and made in China and they sell for 4,000 euros a pair. And in case you didn't know, active means that the amplifiers come after the crossover and that we get one amp per driver and we also get one DAC per driver too. And those amps and DACs sit inside the speaker cabinet itself. So the Waveguide Soft Dome Tweeter is powered by a 100 watt Class A B amp and the long throw mid bass driver is driven by a 250 watt Class D amp. So we've got a mixture of Class A B and Class D. A more visible talking point is the rear firing bass reflex port which is mounted within like a ribbed die cast aluminium heat sink or aluminum in the USA and Canada and that's designed to cool the electronics inside the loudspeaker because that's what heat sinks do, right? They draw the heat away. Now let's talk about something I don't like and it's a problem that might be unique to my circumstances. And that problem is I can't get a hardwired digital connection successfully between my Samsung Frame TV and the Duetto. So irrespective of whether I use the HDMI ARC connection on the back of the main speaker or a Toslink connection, I get glitches in the sound every five to 10 seconds. Now that could be because this pair of Duetto, you can see them behind me, are a pre-production version. But hold that thought because we'll be coming back to it later on in this video. Now thankfully there's an alternative. I can route my Apple TV's AirPlay digital streaming output into the AirPlay 2 digital streaming input of the Duetto's and I get fully synced, yeah, properly synced sound and audio. Sound and audio? <laughs> Video and audio. And that's because the primary Duetto speaker, in my case on the right hand side, that houses a network streamer that does Bluetooth, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, Apple AirPlay 2 that I just mentioned, Google Chromecast and Rune Ready. Well, Rune Ready eventually, it's not certified just yet, certainly not at time of taping. And outside of edge cases like Squeeze Light and Plex, what the Duetto offers in terms of streaming support, I think is as good as it gets for a product of this type. I think it's really impressive. Now I'll give you a few listening impressions right now because playing Max Richter's take on Vivaldi's Four Seasons, I know a bit controversial, we get a crispness and a vibrancy to strings that really renders the duetto as not being mellow sounding or laid back. This is a speaker that sits up straight with its shoulders back. But Art Brute's 18,000 Lira tells us that the duetto aren't overly strident with aggressive and poorly recorded indie punk rock which for me is a relief because I just love that kind of music. I love Art Brute, I love indie rock and punk rock and just <coughs> sounding records like Wire and obviously the Sex Pistols, but also lesser known bands like The Rakes and also the first Horrors album, absolutely superb. Mind you, the second Horrors album was also really, really good. And then cutting over to the original version of Bowie's Cat People, which he did with Giorgio Moroder, I think. The, the Duetto display a mid-range clarity and a low-end kick that embarrassed the outgoing KEF R3 Meta that I had in previously, and that for me was a real surprise. Back to something I'm not so crash hot on, the grills. They look cheap and they feel somewhat pointless or unnecessary because they're so small, they don't really cover very much. And then there's the cable vomit coming off the back of the primary speaker. 
that's also a turn off. But I realize that that problem pretty much exists on every other streaming active loudspeaker. Well, apart from one, which we'll get to in a bit. But cable vomit on the Duetto is pretty much unavoidable when you want to hardwire in your TV using HDMI eARC or Toslink. And it's unavoidable if you want to hardwire in a turntable to its MM Phono input, or you want to hardwire in obviously a subwoofer or connect an ethernet cable for streaming. And yes, these loudspeakers do Wi-Fi streaming as well. That's how I exclusively use them. And I got not a single dropout. Talking of which, I'm on the fence a little bit still about the ultra wideband interlink that connects the, the secondary loudspeaker to the primary. Now it's great when it works, but I had one afternoon where I couldn't get any sound out of the secondary loudspeaker, that the, the interlink, the UWB interlink just fell over. And I had no hard wired option to fall back on. So I was forced then and there to troubleshoot the, the problem. And after a couple of reboots and a bit of swearing, I got it working again. But also sometimes when I stand directly between the speakers for around 30 seconds or more, the secondary channel drops out. That is until I step away again. So these might not be the best streaming loudspeakers to put either side of a couch that you sit on. Now, I know some of you would think, oh, I would never do that, but some people do. Some people have a couch against the wall and then they have a speaker on one side and a speaker on another. And I don't know whether the Duetto are gonna be great for that particular use case. Also, the remote control, it's infrared, I'm 50-50 on this. I like the unusual design, but I wish that the big buttons had a bit more give to them. Perhaps it just needs just a bit more usage, perhaps they'll ease with time, but it's, it's certainly better than the remote control that comes with the KEF LS60 wireless. Now something that I really like are the light display and touch controls that Sonus Faber have integrated into the vegan leather covering on the top of the loudspeaker, on the top of the primary loudspeaker. It looks cool and it makes it easy to adjust volume with a simple touch or slide to change the active input. It's all very elegantly done. Now the secondary loudspeaker, it has vegan leather on top as well but there's no light show or touch controls there. It's just on the primary. But yeah, it's, it's super classy the way the Sonus Faber have done that. Now, Sonus Faber rate the Duetto as 3 dB down at 37 Hertz. So I have to ask myself, do I crave a subwoofer when listening to the slow techie throb of Luigi Tozzi's Deep Blue Volume 3? And the answer is no, I don't. And that's possibly because the low end action produced by the Duetto has plenty of hip thrust, plenty of womp, plenty of oomph. And because the Duetto's crossover is done in DSP, Sonus Faber has also added Fletcher Munson curve correction to improve listener satisfaction at lower listening levels. What that means is, is that basically our hearing is less sensitive to bass and treble at low volume levels, which is why they put the loudness button on many vintage amplifiers or what are now vintage amplifiers. So cleverly, what Sonus Faber have done here is they've added Fletcher Munson curve correction as the volume drops below 20%. But if you don't like what it does to the sound, you can always turn it off in the settings. Now there is a web interface that you can access the settings in. There's also an app, but I haven't used the app because I did all of my listening and testing before it was released and certainly well before we filmed the B-roll for this video. So you're not gonna see it in this video at all, I'm really sorry. But you don't really need to because we've got Rune and Airplay and Chromecast and Spotify Connect and Tidal Connect. So I guess people wanting to integrate Cobra streaming, you'll probably need to do that inside the Sonus Faber app. I'm assuming it you know, integrates it there. But I think, I don't know, 95% of people will find some app that's external to the Sonus Faber Duetto's app that works for them. Anyway, I'm getting off track here because you know what other streaming loudspeaker does Fletcher Munson curve correction and sells for 4,000 euros a pair? Yep, you guessed it, the A500 from Denmark's Bookart. So I teed up this side-by-side -side comparison by loading the stock neutral or the neutral stock master tuning 
onto the A500 and spinning once again, because I'm on a real kick with this guy at the moment, the 2023 remaster of Swordfish Trombones by Tom Waits. Now the Duetto come on for me with greater transparency and better top end extension than the book arts. And the Sonus Faber also do a better job in delivering the percussive snap heard on the track Troubles Braids. The transient attack on that track sounds more crisp fried at the edges. And the percussive snap that emanates from the book arts, it does so with a decent jump factor. But from the duetto, it's positively startling, recalling the dynamic reflexes of a Klipsch loudspeaker. And the Hammond organ that steers, I think, what is Tom Waits's funniest track of all time. And that's amongst some fairly stiff competition. The Hammond organ that kind of steers us through that track cuts through more cleanly in Italian hands. And this leaves the A500 to me sounding a little reticent and a little murky. And that's definitely not something we'd call out when hearing the Bukha in isolation. They are still an incredible loudspeaker. But such is the instructiveness of a side-by-side -side comparison. And so I hear the Danes paint a little extra warmth on the edges of bass notes to come on as slightly thicker in the mid bass than the Sonus Faber. And on the low end dynamics necessitated or called for by a mode selector album, the two speaker models are reasonably evenly matched, but the book arts sound the weightier of the two, whereas the Sonus Faber is the more fleet of foot. And when watching movies, the lowest sounds that underpin action sequences are better defined by the Sonus Faber, which in turn makes them sound yeah, I guess the more visceral of the two loudspeakers. Again, another surprise for me. And that sort of extra edge definition also helps with dialogue intelligibility. And not even the extra details master tuning applied to the book art loudspeaker could coax enough from them to match the duetto on basically top to bottom clarity. But of course, the book art gives us the audible flexibility of those master tunings. And the Duetto's boundary proximity settings look a bit feeble when sat next to the Platin Hub's room correction smarts, which can now be done with a wireless microphone and not just an iPhone or an Android phone. And the Weaster firing Platin Hub is still my preferred way to keep things visually tidy cable wise. It helps us sidestep the cable vomit that yawns from the back of an active loudspeaker's primary box. Now, I mentioned earlier that this pair of Duetto comes from a pre-production batch. And I didn't know that when they arrived, actually. I've only had to guess, I guess I'd sort of dug into this as I started to get problems with HDMI and Toslink. So that could be the reason why this particular pair are misbehaving with HDMI ARC and Toslink. And it could be just my Samsung TV, I don't know for sure. But what I do know for sure is that I have zero glitches when feeding the Sonus Faber with a CD transports Toslink output. And the only way for me to know with any degree of certainty if a retail pair of Duetto will play nicely with my TV is to have the Italian company send me a second pair, a retail pair, which they have actually agreed to do in the last couple of days, which is top of them. But I'm gonna ask them to hold fire because I want them to send me not only the retail pair, but also the, the dedicated stands that sell for 749 euros. And they're not gonna be shipping, I don't think until maybe November, maybe December. And I want those because I suspect those stands being a bespoke design might also alleviate some of the cable vomit coming off the back of the primary loudspeaker. I'm hoping that those stands have some kind of cable management in their central column. So until then, this story about this absolutely terrific sounding streaming active loudspeaker from Sonus Faber, it remains, yeah, unfinished, incomplete. But if you enjoyed this video to this point, and if you found it entertaining or informative, then please give us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards streaming active loudspeakers and doing side-by-side -side comparisons 
with price comparative models like the book arts. If you dig that, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And also, if you understand that I don't have any other comparably priced streaming active loudspeakers here to do other comparisons. I did say this video was going to be a bit light on comparisons because I did so many for the, the WinPro Plus. So if you can live with that, then please consider subscribing to this channel below. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Hello, me again. You're watching this video on YouTube. But if you are watching it over on my Patreon, you might be seeing it a day or so early, depending on whether I have my shit together or not. Now, the Patreon version of this video might not have as many outtakes as the previous Patreon videos, but also on Patreon this month, I've made an exclusive video, a Patreon exclusive video, about all the products that I'm gonna be reviewing between now and the end of the year. Well, most of them anyway. I did hold a couple back because I'm not sure when they're gonna arrive, but that's, that's also on Patreon and we're giving away a couple of things. And also, many of you ask like, what's that song? Now, I'm happy for you to Shazam my videos. Of course I am, like why wouldn't I be? But my patrons, I spare them the chore of having to do that and I build them playlists for every video that I make, both featuring the music that I talk about in the video and the music heard in the interludes. So if you'll consider supporting me over on Patreon, even if it's just for a month, just to buy me a cup of coffee or something, that will be splendid. So thank you very much.